my blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How wonderful is your name. Lord, I pray that you'll be with us today. I pray that you'll give me the power of the Holy Spirit. Because, Lord, I can't teach this by myself. I can't do it. But I'm a vessel willing to be used by the Lord, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to grasp what's in this lesson and help us to meditate on it and to be looking for your coming and not to be a, caught unaware. For I ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. This is part two of the Song of Moses. This is the second part. The Song of Moses was a prophetic song that takes you from the, the, the time that they went into the promised land. It takes you all the way to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's one of the most amazing songs. I've never heard it sang, but it's, it's, it's poetry in my ear. Because we're at the end of that song. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, it's where we'll be reading from. Our lesson will start at verse 31. This 31 is a prediction concerning the counterfeit rock. We'll be looking at three things in this lesson. We'll be looking at the rock, we'll be looking at the vine, and we'll be looking at the branch. Those three things the Old Testament describes the Lord Jesus Christ. America used to be a refuge for those who sought freedom and freedom of worship, but no more. The attack on Christianity is hitting the news, and some news, some of them aren't even covering it. There's a lot of people in prison right now that never did anything except for stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. For 2,000 years, man has rejected God's word and has rejected the Son of God. And now it's time for judgment. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2,000 years. And the church is nothing but a trickle in the population of this world. In Luke chapter 21, verse 25, talks about this judgment. And everything that's mentioned here is happening right now. And a lot of stuff I can't even talk about because they wouldn't even allow this to be put on YouTube. Verse 25, And there shall be signs in the heaven and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexities, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts felling them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven sh shall be shaken. When you look at what's going on in the world today, you look at all these coincidental things that are happening, which I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that everything is happening just the way the Bible wants it. God's word is true and every man's a liar. And if you want to know what's going on, get your King James Bible out and start reading it. This is the 77th year from the end of World War II. And now it looks like World War III is about to start. Queen Elizabeth dies in her 70th year of her reign as Queen of England. King Charles, 
1975, is now the king of England. His coat of arms is the red dragon. And if you want to see it, I got it up here. And the bear, or the lion with bear claws. His father, Prince Philip, said one time back in 1988, after he dies, he would like to be reincarnated as a deadly virus to help solve the issue of overpopulation. These people believe that they own the earth and that we're just a plague on this earth and we need to be controlled. When you look at the book of Esther, Esther is laid out to reflect the days that we're living in right now. In the, the time right before the tribulation. When you start studying the book of Esther, you'll be amazed what you find. It's all there. All you have to do is look at it and believe. In Esther chapter 1 verse 5, you don't have to go there. We're just going to be basically taking bits and pieces of it. When the days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, both after the great and small seven days. Hmm. In the court of the garden of the king's palace, Vesti, a type of the church, the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belongs to the king Azurus. Vesti, when you get married, a woman's place is next to her husband. A woman's place is to obey her husband. And the place of the man is to do what the wife tells you to do. But Vesti was overconfident in her beauty. It was no longer about the king. It was about her and her beauty and, and being admired by all of her peers. That's the church today. When the king called Vesti to the, to, the, to the feast, he wanted to show off her beauty. But she said, nah, I'm not going. I'm, I got my friends here. We're going to stay here. If you study uh, Diane, Jacob's only daughter, she got in trouble when she went for, to meet with the women of the land. And that's where our world has went wrong today. Women no longer cater to their husbands and men never don't cater to their wives anymore. It's all about them me, myself, and I, and my friends. In Revelations chapter 3, verse 3, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church, and unto the angel of the church of Laodicea. And that's the church age we're living in right now. But you don't have to be a part of Laodicea. These things saith the Amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot, and I would work that thou cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Just like Vesti, she's kicked out. She's spewed out. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increasing with goods and need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. They're just like the world. Most churches, you can't tell the difference between the world. In the book of Esther, the king goes out searching for another queen. God's going to 
take, take what remnant he's got of the church out of here. And if you don't believe that, and you, I, I get letters, well, that was this guy saying that several years ago and this guy saying it. No, you can go back to first century church and find the rapture. You just got to do your research and quit trusting in man. The rapture is going to happen. It's going to happen soon. Mordecai in this story is like the, the Holy Spirit. And he told, told uh, Esther, don't tell him who you are or what you are. Don't tell him you're Jewish. Just like in Revelations, the Jews have to hide. This story just, just amazes me how it matches up with the tribulation. And of course, Haman, the type of the beast, in Revelations will be destroyed. But Mordecai is going to be glorified next to the king. Sounds like my savior, doesn't it? This is the 49th year of Israel ruling over Jerusalem. Next year will be the Jubilee year. But it's also the 70th Jubilee from Moses receiving the law. Just a coincidence. By the way, that'll be October 5th of this next month. We're almost there. Today, will be the first day of the Feast of Trumpets. It lasts for two days. They'll blow 99 trumpets, and the last trump will be blown on the last day, and it will be for a longer period of time. That's why it's called the last trump. On September 15, 2015, you ever notice that all this stuff is in one month? Woo. World War II ended in September 2nd. Five perfect, unblemished red heifers arrived in Israel, and they celebrated, and they, they just gave it a little fanfare, but they were all excited about these, these heifers because in order to have, start the sacrifice back up, they have to have a red heifer with no blemish. Numbers chapter 19, verse 2. The temple is about to be built. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 2, 1 and 2, it says it, it will be built during the tribulational period. I think we'll be out of here before it gets built. And there was a reed given unto him like a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Arise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles. This treaty, this, this two-nation treaty that they're coming up with is there. It's, it's going to be signed pretty soon. You do not divide the land of Israel. When you divide that land, bad things happen. And they've happened for years but the church is so asleep they don't realize, well, that was because they did that over there. This hurricane that destroyed $2 trillion is because we gave that back to the Palestinians. Who's to blame? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 31. This is probably the most important verse that you're going to read today. For their rock is not our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. When you look at this rock is not our rock, you'll notice that the first rock is a small r, the second rock is a big r. That means there's a difference between these two rocks. One is real rock, and the other one is not. One represents a person. The other thing just represents someone's imagination or some demon.
Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 says, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. John chapter 19, verse 15 says, And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith, Shall I crucify your king? And you say, Well, you've said that several times. Go on to something else. This is very important because this explains everything. The chief priest answered and said, We have no king but Caesar. And for 2,000 years, the Jews have rejected Jesus Christ, and, the, and Jesus Christ is nothing more than a curse word in most Jewish homes. And for 2,000 years, Caesar has plagued the Jews. All you have to do is do a little bit of study about the Jews and how they've been plagued and how they've been persecuted from one place to the other. Because they didn't choose the right rock. Have you chosen the right rock? It's not any rock will do. It's only that rock is Jesus. He's the only one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Lord Jesus Christ. And I, hear, I see these, these advertisements. Well, everyone believes in the same same God, you know, they just call him by different names. No, they don't. No, they don't. But the Lord Jesus Christ said it would be like this in the last days. No one knows what a, what a true God is. I serve the almighty God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, the holy redeemer, The nation of Israel rejected that rock and they took a stone, a counterfeit rock. And that's what they're about to pick up now. You know, when you study Judaism, you know, it's not about the Bible. It's just like our pastor says, it's all about the Talmud and, and all these other uh, mis uh, Jewish mysticisms. But a Jew, the other day, I was watching him, and I sent it out on email. I thought it was great. This guy was a, a double doctorate in, in theology, in Judaism. And his mom comes home one day and says, I met the Messiah. It's Jesus Christ. And her husband said, are you crazy, woman? We're Jewish. She says, well, look at this. Read this, 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 test, uh, this uh, verse or this chapter, Isaiah 53. And he read it, and he goes, well, I'll have to do some studying on this. So he did some studying on that, and he got saved. There are more Jews being saved right now in the nation of Israel and around the world than Gentiles because the blinds are being taken off. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. We're seeing, I mean, we are there. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God setteth in the temple of God, showing himself to be that he is God. He's a liar. So we looked at the rock. The next verse says, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 32 says, For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their cluster are bitter. Their wine is of poison of dragons. And the cruel venom of asp. Is not this laid up in store with me? and sealed up among my treasures. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand. 
and the things that shall come upon them make haste. You see where we're at here? We're going into the tribulation, the vine of Sodom. Jesus Christ says in John chapter 15, verse 5, says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, he, shall, he can do nothing. You need the true rock. You need the true vine. Without that, you're on your way to hell. These two are the same. I know every church out there believes something different, and it doesn't matter what you believe. It does. It does. It matters. With God, his word is true and every man a liar. And everything in this book you're going to be judged by, not by what your preacher says, it's by what the book says. Which vine is your vine? Biden sent 25 to 30 agents to, to a home of a pro-life author, a father of seven, a good man, arrested him for repeated, reportedly protecting his son from an abortion escort. At these abortion clinics, they have escorts that escort the women in so the, the pro-lifers can't get a hold of them and change their minds about their babies. It says that this little boy was 12 years old and this guy was going up calling him a, telling him his father's a faggot and you're a faggot, you know. What kind of man does that? The father, a good man, stands in front, gets in front of him, and protects his son from this vile person So one day, 35 to 20, uh, 25 to 30 officers shows up at his house with long guns and vests and all this stuff, pounding on the door, scaring these seven little kids, and then arresting their father and taking him away. Come, Lord Jesus. I don't care about me. I care about these little kids. This scares me to death. The next verse are to the tribulational Jews. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 36. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. If you want to see your loved ones saved, you pray, Lord, take everything away from them and make them, bring them to the point where they can only look up. When they look up, they're going to find Jesus. If they continue to look forward, you know, man, man, I've said this before, man is the only creature that can do this. And I can't do it very good because i got a rod in my neck. But every, this is the only creature that can do this. Look up. All other creatures are looking down, looking and scavenging and looking for something to eat, something to sustain themselves. When man becomes like a brute beast, fit for destruction, judgment is very, very near. And we're seeing that all over the world. But here are the Jews... God wants them to look up. God wants them to look for him. He says in verse 37, he says, And he shall say, When or where are their gods? Their little rocks, in whom they trusted. Which did eat of the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their their drink uh, drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. 
God's saying you trusted in these other gods, you're trusting in this and you're trusting in that, but you're not looking up for real hope and real security. So what happens? They go off in their own little ways, like a, like a dog sniffing out something, or like a swine with his nose planted in the ground. Lord, help us. I know every time I get up here, it's going to be depressing. But if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, I get excited. I get excited every time a Jewish holiday comes around because I think maybe this is the, the time. Maybe the Lord will come back today or tomorrow. But I know he's coming back. If it's not this year, it'll be next year. That's the, way I, that's the way I tick. I've been like this ever since I got saved. I want the Lord to come now. I heard a preacher say one time, says there's only one thing God can't do. And they said, well, that's, what's that? He says, it can't come soon enough for me. And that's true. It can't come soon enough for me. In Psalms chapter 20, verse 7, this is America today some trust in chariots some in horses but we will remember the name of the lord our god what are you trusting in you trusting in the american government i mean we're trusting in a man right now they i'm not sure what's going on with him i've had a lot of my family members have dementia and alzheimer's so I recognize the symptoms. The man is not there. And if you're wondering about, well, we'll elect someone good next time. We don't elect presidents. They are appointed. Election is a farce. It's been a farce for years. There's no hope in our politics. Your hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. You pray that God will give us a righteous leader, and that's the only way we're going to get one. And I pray it's the Lord Jesus Christ, because there's nobody righteous but him. In Deuteronomy chapter 39, it says, or 32 and 39, it says, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hands, for I lift up my hands to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I don't want to be rewarded by hating the Lord. That's eternal hell fire. And then to be taken one day out of hell, put in front of a righteous God at the white throne judgment, and believe me, those people are not going to be too thrilled when they get in front of a righteous God and knowing how wicked they are, standing on absolutely nothing in space. They have nothing to hold them up. And they have no chance in hell of being redeemed. Because if their name was in the book, they would be up there behind the throne, not in front of the throne. And most of them will be so wicked that they'll cry, just send me to hell, send me to hell, send me to hell. Throw me in a lake of fire, throw me in a lake of fire right now because I don't want to be in front of this righteous, all-powerful being. It would be a fearful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. That's my God. Not these little sick-looking guys that walk around acting like they're so pious. My God is a, is a king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's an almighty God. I get tired of... And you mess with me you got a problem. Because I try to be just like Jesus Christ. 
I want to be conformed to his image. And I'm a man and not a wuss. I had the wuss beat out of me a long time ago. For I lift up my hands to heaven and I live forever. If my wet my glittering sword and mine hand taketh hold on judgment, you better hope you're not in the front of that judgment. Matthew chapter 2, verse 23 says, and we're getting into the, to the branch. He came and he dwelt in the city called Nazareth, that he might be ful fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. I couldn't find that in the Bible, but it's in there. Nazarene. What does that mean? Nazarene means branch. The branch. And the branch is found several times in the, in the Bible, but it's only found four times when it, when it relates to Jesus Christ. And this is amazing to me. A branch. One time it's found... It represents the king of kings, the line of Judah, in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. Wow. Now, if you look at the order of these four branches, you'll see that they relate to the four cherubims in the temple of God. And Zechariah chapter 1 and chapter 10. The branch also is found as a servant, a calf. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8. The branch, a perfect man, son of man. Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12. Branch, eagle, high and lifted up. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. And that's it. There's no more. Those four attributes of God are depicted in this branch. He's the king of kings, and he's the lord of lords. He's the perfect man. He's the he's humble servant. And he's almighty and lift, high and lifted up. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. And also it represents Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They describe the four attributes of God. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says vengeance is his mind. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, he talks about the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the, the good tidings unto the meek and he hath sent me to bind up the broken heart and proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And after... This is what Jesus read off when he started his ministry in Nazareth, the branch. And then he sat down and shut the book. But that's not all the verse. The second part of that verse is about to be, is about to happen. Isaiah chapter 61, 2, second half. And the day of vengeance of our Lord to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes and oil for joy, for the mourning of the gar garment of praise, for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of our Lord, that he might be glorified. The tribulation is going to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. His enemies are going to hate him, but I'm going to love him. I'm going to love him until, the, until all eternity. I don't care about anything else. I thought the Lord was finished with me. I, I thought that was the last time I was going to teach, but apparently not. God wanted me to teach one more time. I don't know why. But he says, finish your lesson. I said, okay, I'll finish it. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 42. 
and I will make my, mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall dis- devour flesh, and that with the blood of the same slain and of the captives from the beginning of vengeance upon the enemies, or enemy, that's the devil. Revelation chapter 14, verse 20. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and the blood came out of the winepress, and even unto the horse's bridle, by the space of 1,600 furlongs, 200 miles. I get emotional about this because I don't want to see anyone go to hell. I really don't. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. Me and my wife went to Pigeon Forge, and we, and we walked around. We tried to witness, and, you know, people just don't want to hear. They just walk away. They just get mad at you. Rejoice, O ye nations, verse 43, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his <coughs> adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. The tribulation is not about punishing Israel. It's about bringing Israel back to God. And it works marvelously because many people will be saved. And if you want to be saved during the tribulational period, you better be good to the Jews because that's part of their per- prerequisite. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. And they said, when did we do that to you, Lord? He says, when you did it to the least of my brother and you did it to me. So if you don't make it to, if, you don't, if you're not saved and you go into the tribulational period and you have to go through this hell that's coming, just, just be looking for a Jew to help. During the tribulation, there's 21 judgments. I covered this on another lesson, but I think it needs to be done again. When these seals are open, which there's seven of them, doesn't mean they're going to happen and they're, they're closed. No, this is going to go all the way through to the end. Trumpets, when they're blown, when they're blown, It doesn't stop right there. It goes all the way to the end. The golden vials full of the wrath of God starts at the middle part of the tribulation and goes all the way to the end. But there's three woes that God talks about. In Revelation chapter 9, it says it loosed the four angels. These hideous, horrible angels are going to be loosed on this earth out of the river Euphrates. Revelation chapter 11, verse 12, talks about the two witnesses being taken out of here. That's a woe. When they're taken out of here, where are you going to hear the gospel? Who's going to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ? And then after that, the wrath of God is poured out on the world. In Revelation chapter 12, 12, it says the, the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has but a short time. And that short time is going to be hell on earth for every man who's called a human being. I stay, you know, I stay most of the... I study a lot of the Bible, and I, I read a lot of commentaries, but I heard Gene Kim talk about this one day, and I thought, wow, that's good. James chapter 5. When you read James chapter 5, it's talking to, the beginning of it is talking to the, to the Jews. It's a ministry to the Jews. But in James chapter 5, verse 1, A lot of people look at this and they say, well, rich people can't be saved. No, no, rich people can be saved. I know a lot of rich people 
that are saved and they love the Lord and they give a lot of their money to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. But James chapter 5, verse 1, and you might find this really interesting. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. We're talking about the tribulation. There's a lot of rich men out there that think they own the world. And there's a lot of people out there that have hoarded all kinds of wealth, and they have all this wealth to use. But it's all for them. It's for power. He says, your riches are corrupt and your garment is moth-eaten. When you're talking about these riches, the riches are not in their pockets. They're not in the bank. It's in them. It's under their skin, on their right hand or in their forehead. That's where they have the riches. That's where all the riches are going to be one day. And you can talk to anyone that studies this stuff. Riches aren't going to be in the bank. They're not going to have anything in the bank. You try to rob a bank during the tribulation, you ain't going to get nothing. It's all, it's all uh, technology. And your garment is moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Now, where have you heard that before? You go to Revelations. It talks about the sores that break out on the people who take the mark, who save their riches in themselves. They break out in boils all over their, their head. And, and believe me, these aren't going to be normal. What I'm reading about is, is horrible. They're going to be, they're, these, these sores are going to be black and ooze with what they call black goo. And it sounds crazy. I've been studying this for about 15 years now. And they're putting it in everything that you ha- eat. You can't get away from this stuff. They're putting it in everything. Food, injections, whatever, they're putting it there. And when people, during the tribulational period, when God puts this plague of sores, grievous sores, these things are going to ooze out of your skin. And you're going to be miserable. And the sun's going to be seven times hotter than it normally is. And you're going to be miserable. You're going to walk around with all these sores and you can't, you can't walk straight. You're going to have your, look, kind of reminds you of a zombie, don't it? And he's got all these sores and they're going to look for something to drink. And there's nothing to drink because everything is blood. The rivers are turned to blood. The ocean is turned to blood. Everything is blood. You turn on the faucet, blood comes out. You walk down the street and there's dead bodies laying everywhere because there's going to be billions of people dead at one time and they're not going to be able to bury them. Boy, that's going to be a smell, isn't it? And you'll see some animal gnawing on some dead person and you'll see people walking down the streets looking for a dead, a, a, a fresh dead corpse to try to get some, some liquids out of them. I'm... This is what the Bible says. This is not me. And Moses came and spake, verse 44, all these words of the song in the ears of the people. He and Hosea, the son of Nun, it's not, it's, this is not just the word, but all the words in this book are the words of God. Not some of them, all of them. Look what he says here. He says it several times, three times, four times. He says, all the words of the song in the ears of the people Verse 45, and Moses made an end of speaking all these words 
to all of Israel. That's what's wrong with our country today. We haven't been singing this song of the word of God. It's music to my ear. Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day. God's saying, listen to what these words are saying. Please listen to them. God is saying, you better listen to them. And you better teach it from one generation to the next generation to the next generation to the next generation. But we failed to do that. And now one generation is worse than the generation before that and, the, and before that and before that and before that until we have what we have today. People kicking old ladies and beating, killing people on the streets. Chaos. Mayhem. You got countries over there that, that have been decimated, like Pakistan has been decimated by droughts and floods. And they don't know what they're going to do because there's no food and no one's coming for their help. You're seeing this all over the world. Jesus Christ is coming again. You better be ready. I don't like to be a doomsday guy, but I am. I was called Downer Dave when I was at work, trying to warn people what's coming. When you read the Bible, you get, it, when you look at the positive things in the Bible, there's only one thing positive in the Bible. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything else is negative. You find me something positive in the Bible, there'll be a lot more negative behind it. Because people are people. We don't, we all, we all have to be reminded about serving the Lord Jesus Christ. All day long, I hear this voice in my heart saying, you shouldn't watch that. Don't listen to that. You're thinking about something you shouldn't be thinking about. Repent. And that's what it's all about, is getting right with the Lord, getting your hearts right with the Lord Jesus Christ before you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, not after. I want as much gold and precious jewels to put at my Savior's feet as I can. I don't want to be standing there with nothing. I don't want to go through all eternity naked. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. We thank you, Lord, for this message. And, Lord, I pray that it hit the hearts and minds of those who are here and those who have listened on the, on the Internet. Let your name be lifted up and glorified, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, help me to keep on keeping on and standing firm. Bless our pastor as he gets up here to speak, and I pray that it will be a message that will edify the church and bring convictions to those who are lost. For I ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, the precious name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.